This area is a place that I normally wouldn't choose to have a studio, but it has changed. What I like about the area is it's a humble place for workers, and it reminds me to work as hard as they all work. I have lived in a society that has rejected culture, so I know what it means. So it's not sentimental what I'm saying, I know it. That is not a, that it's a less better life if you wouldn't have sculpture in our lives. Neri Bagramian is an Iranian born German artist. She's a really important artist working in sculpture today. Her work is made of a range of very different materials, quite wild sometimes, you know, mixtures of silicon, resins, polyurethane, but also sometimes marble, woods. You see forms often that have a familiarity to them. It's a vocabulary of shapes and forms that's abstract, that has connections to human body and the organic world around us. A colored volume sitting in space that's not really strictly figurative, but it might invoke uh, very powerfully an elbow or a knee. It's also entered into the kinds of objects and furniture that we live with from day to day. It's kind of hard to figure out what it's of, but it has this powerful effect on you. Its development of sculptural language is completely unique. It confronts, it absorbs, it disturbs, it engages, but above all, its physicality is totally and utterly compelling, causing one to investigate what is there with a kind of intensity that is rare to find. I never was afraid that things are not fitting or not matching or are not directly understandable. I was not afraid to speak when I knew I'm not very good at it. I trained myself to speak the, this, this, the language of the sculpture, and I think we understand each other somehow. <laughs> the main space is cold, and there is no reason to heat it up. It's almost like a street, covered street. I just add another building to it where I can heat the space. It's the size that I need to work uh, and it's cozy. But it, it just organizes and it gives the, a rhythm to the day, these different spaces. There is no ritual that I think I go in the studio and I just start doing this, start doing this, and I have this idea. But it's, I mean, everything affects me. So, um, and looking at other things affects me. So it, it just, it's very different. Sometimes I just start uh, with a work that I know what it is. It's very intuitive. And then it becomes something very clear. And, and other things I start very clear and I lose everything that I thought beforehand. Here I mostly draw ideas of things, sculptures, um, that should not become sculptures. Not every idea has to become a sculpture. It has its own existence. People are asking me, so if your studio is getting bigger, do you do bigger work? And I said, actually, in my case, it was the opposite. Here, I don't use the space to make larger pieces because I already did large pieces, monstrous right. pieces. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the, the potential of this space is more 
to look from above, I can go to the roof, look from mm-hmm. above mm-hmm. The, the colors, but also sometimes just to leave the work unpacked. There is a piece that came back from Milan. I didn't see that piece altogether and I just wanted to understand the piece again. So I have that corner where I, where I want to taste things that I don't understand myself. It's a hidden corner and uh, the light is beautiful, so I will just try things out to understand the piece. The work that we're showing at the Nasher is from her most recent works called Misfits. We see these objects that have this kind of recognizable sculptural language. You might look at shapes and be reminded of Jean Arp or Noguchi. I build the model after the work, so just right. for you to, to have, mm-hmm. it, it, was a, it was a suggestion. We chose the one that I suggested, but it doesn't have to be. As we were installing it, nothing quite fits the way you think it's supposed to. There's this thread that runs through her work of things that don't fit, that go back in many ways to our own bodies and the way our bodies serve us and do so much for us and work so hard for us, but also often fail. And even that word fail or failure, what does that even mean when we apply it to our bodies? Um, I think there's something really compassionate in Nairi's work and also a kind of humility. Nairi's work is ambitious and it can be very beautiful, but I think it also gives us all permission to be a little bit imperfect. I just have so many ideas. Sculpture art has another dimension of understanding space and time, so pushing them as far as I can to left and right and out of the centers where they feel so safe, um, it is the understanding of sculpture. They have to push the boundaries, they have to push the space.